Okay, let's do some new VFX. Uh, this one was done using Graphire. I guess that is 3ds Max. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to do this part here. Maybe in another video we can do the wall destructing part. It's all procedural, so if I just change the animation a bit here. So let me remove these keyframes and just... See, it's just... And let me just move this down. Maybe rotate it. Yeah. See, it's uh, procedure. The first thing we're going to do is create this wall. So I'm just going to use the default cube and uh, shape it into a brick, something like that. You can give this uh, a bevel, yeah, something like that. Duplicate this, duplicate this a few times, just like that. And uh, we can have this in a collection called bricks. Let's go to geometry nodes or add a plane and bring in uh, the bricks collection. If I use the duplicate elements, I can make copies of this and offset them using a set position and I only want to offset them in the Z direction so I can use the index as let's do combine X can use the index for the Z now I can scale this down using a math node I just multiply remove these gaps so I can make the wall as tall as I want now if I want I can even also make another duplicate duplicate copies and this time let me do the same thing I uh, use set position and uh, this time for the X again so now we have some interlock brick wall I can make it as wide as I want but uh, uh, let's go back to the bricks we don't need this many bricks we just need I guess two this and this only that let me first hide this so we only need this and Let's make sure that everything works so the top part works so I can make the wall as as long or as wide as I want expose these parameters so after that we need to realize instances here just like that now that we're done with the wall all we need is a mesh and a plane uh, that covers the whole wall like that apply scale and uh, give it a few subdivisions I just use our uh, Subdivision surface set to simple make a few subdivisions Just like that now I can come here come to this wall give it a surface deform modifier select this as a target and hit bind now if I shape this If I pull on this you can see this wall also bends if I add a sphere UV sphere apply scale and make it moving forward Just like that and give this a uh, dynamic paint type canvas and uh, uh, this should be displacement uh, and uh, this should be a uh, dynamic paint type brush add brush mesh plus proximity if I hit play I should displace this but I guess I didn't bind uh, let me come back here hit bind perfect now we just have to hide this. I'll just uh, change this display to wire. And now we should have, yeah, damage like that. But one thing we could do is uh, give this a rigid body, type passive, and uh, give this projectile a rigid body active, rigid body active, and animate it so that we have control over its movement. So I'll set animation there and Turn off the animation so that the physics body takes over. Since we are using geometry nodes to generate the wall, you need to make sure that in the rigid body the source is set to final. And yeah, so now the ball bounce on th bounces on the wall and leaves damage. Yeah, we want to have more projectiles. Also, we want to be able to just move this around. But uh, because this object already has keyframes, if I move it around, it will just snap back to its original position so what I can do is add an empty parent this to the empty ctrl p and now I can move this anywhere I want and the animation will stay so I'll just do something like that perfect now we want multiple copies I just scale this down a bit and maybe push it up okay that's too much And since we want multiple copies of this, I can duplicate this and just offset the keyframes so that we have more 
projections and uh, I can also have these in a collection called uh, brushes and in and on this mesh I can use the brush collection here you can see that's good yeah, I can have multiple copies but just offset the animation now I can animate this I'll just have it in the center and just animate the rotation I can also add a, a ground okay so if I hide this you can see the damage yeah sometimes the collision won't work for this wall for some reason even when you have this set to south to final so a better alternative is, is to just create a separate wall that you won't render would just be there I'll just set the display to wire and give this a collision a dynamic paint a rigid body type passive you get all types of damage now I look at this now uh, if you want the damage to be deeper all you have to do is push this uh, this piece here the one with the dynamic paint a bit forward and uh, it will make larger displacements maybe let me give it a type wireframe as well yeah you can see what is happening now it's time to add some damaged particles. In the original, you can see that you have some secondary damaged particles going off here. And we can add that as well. So now you can see here we have those additional pieces, uh, which are just these pieces here. So I'm just going to borrow that, paste it in here. The way this is going to work, I'm going to use geometry nodes. Let's first go back to textured here. So I'm going to use geometry nodes and white painting to create to create a mask for this collision area. So I'm going to come here, dynamic paint, and add another canvas. Uh, this time it's going to be white and the same brushes collection we want. So I can come here and use white paint. Look at white paint. Um, you need to create the output if it doesn't work out right away first try and disable the first canvas and back on and now it should work after that we can duplicate this just move it slightly forward you now have two copies you can see that's our functioning similarly for the second one we can go to geometry nodes and use uh, remember the second brush we added just adds uh, the weight paint that detail so we can use that using the named attribute and uh, grab this vertex group dp weight and use it uh, let's use greater than to delete geometry so if we preview this you can see it gives us this collision mask and that we can use that to delete geometry so i can uh, delete geometry uh, based off this so i can yeah, just around that area like that. So it leaves a nice, uh, I think, okay, this should be the opposite. So this should be less than. So we're only left with the inside. So if I push this forward, we should be able to see what we are doing here. Yeah, that. And uh, the reason we're doing that is because we want to add a particle system that is based on way only the, the areas that are being hit. So I can come here, create a new particle system, hit play, uh, everything will just emit from the middle. Uh, so we can change the source to use modifiers and you can see now particles are emitted where the mesh is hit. If you go to render object, we can set the rock object as our particle. Now uh, we can scale it randomize the scale, randomize the rotation, have dynamic on, velocity to one, and push them out just a bit, a normal velocity of one like that. The way the particle system works, if there is no mesh or faces to emit from, it will just emit from the source, and uh, when we start seeing faces, 
then it starts emitting from those faces. So what you can do is start the emission after the first face is shown. So for me, it's frame 13. So yeah, we can come in here in the instancing, turn off viewport rendering so that we only see the particles. And also this, we can hide this, have it in our wireframe. So you see, we get damage, but the damage is too, th these rocks are too big. So I'll scale them down again. So every time we hit a wall, we get extra blocks like that. The issue we're having now is these particles will continue falling until the end frame, which is not, which is not realistic. Yeah, it's not realistic. We need to stop, uh, stop emitting at a certain point. And uh, it's very easy. Uh, if I go back to, uh, let me first turn off my particle system and my, and go back to the, to text it. Let me, this is where we are. If we look at the white paint, this is what is creating our mask and it's persistent. So the, em the mesh emission is also persistent. So what you can do instead, you can, we can go to back to the dynamic paint and turn on dissolve. This will make sure that over time, the white paint fades. So if I put this to uh, remove slow and put it to around 50, so we get the damage and it fades away really quickly. And uh, that also means that uh, our, if I turn on the metro nodes, the mesh will appear and then disappear very quickly. Uh, meaning our particles will also emit and stop emitting really quickly. So I can turn off the instancer, come back here and we have that. Yeah, I even added some dust particles falling down. And that, that is the same particle system as this. I'm just using this plane here for the dart. Anyway, if you want to check out the project files, links are going to be in the description. You can get it on my Gumroad page and my Patreon page. Thank you.